Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline and welcome to Overwatch Daily number two. This time my camera's up here by popular request. It was really hard to do serious technology involved, but we managed it today. We're not doing more Apex matches. Mixing it up a little bit, we're doing Overwatch Pit. This was Rogue versus CLG. We're gonna take a look at them here on Route 66. And in this game, I thought that no particular player really stood out, especially to be a crazy, you know, uh, everyone just played well, no, or at least evenly, right? No, no one player really just wrecked. And so both teams kind of played out the game how it should have been played out, just like, you know, played the line out and uh, it really didn't deviate. So I like games like that because it really allows you to see how specific strategic elements work out. Because, you know, if if you pick Genji and Genji wasn't the right pick, but your Genji player goes nuts anyway, well, you can't really see too much from that. But in these sorts of games, generally the better strategy turns out as the, as the victor. So let's get into the game here. It already started, the clock's already winding down. And so let's take a look as we always do at these team compositions. So, CLG is attacking. They're running uh, an aggressive 2-2-2 comp. Fix the dream title, ah, whatever. We'll leave it there. They're running an aggressive 2-2-2 comp. Some people call, call, will call this a dive composition. I think people call too many things dive composition, like, oh, this has a Winston, and a Tracer, and other stuff, so it's dive. I, th I would call this more aggro 2-2-2, because it's not crazy, it's not crazy, right? You still have the two tanks, you still have the two DPS. Farah's kind of like, eh, it's Farah, right? So she, uh, I can do just my music here. Ah, there we go. It's it's Farah. So she has that long range potential. She has that mobile, that mobility, but she's not like a divey, right? So in the meantime, let's look at Rogue. Rogue's defending with an interesting composition. One that's very scary for Rogue to play, not for CLG. This is scary for Rogue because Unko is playing Zenyatta in a and he has no peel essentially akm i assume will be playing with him and in fact if we look at the map this map is not particularly friendly towards support heroes who don't have a lot of peel because if we're on defense like we uh, like we are uh, we only have really two spots as, de as defenders because most people would be holding up here right so you can hold back here as a support or a dps or you could potentially even hold back here those are the only two real options though so Anko on Zenyatta could be back here supporting his team, or if he were to get really, fr I mean, this isn't really a Zenyatta spot actually. This is more of a, an Ana really up aggressive spot over here. So we're not gonna choose this because that's too dangerous without any peelers. <clears throat> so he's gonna be standing back here. And while this is okay, this is not the worst, it's still pretty dangerous. You can have people come up here. He's pretty far away from his team because his team is gonna be focusing that away towards the cart and they're going to leave him behind. So hope so. AKM will be standing there behind him with the soldier. So, but that's a lot of pressure. AKM and Unko have a lot of pressure on them to not just die. And so I, I think that this team composition puts Unko in a particularly precarious position. Ooh, starting starting off with alliteration today. Woo, spicy. So anyway, CLG is kind of poking in. They they sort of have an idea of what they're playing against now, and. At some point, the Winston's going to jump in. The Diva's going to jump in. We saw them off screen over there, fly away. And so Unko dies almost immediately. It's not because he's a bad player. It's just because it's super hard, unless he was like a god. AKM dies as well, by the way. They were playing with each other. And so three divers onto two heroes, neither of which are very beefy heroes, right? It's just a soldier and a Zenyatta. This is kind of what I was talking about in my team composition guide as well. Running these sort of immobile heroes that need peels, without any peelers. And it's possible, right? But CLG's composition does quite well against it. And they exploit it pretty easily. So without that back line, they go down two very early on. And so the rest of Rogue just sort of falls. They can't do too much unless Soon went crazy on Tracer. Soon actually has, I said that no one really stood out. Soon actually did stand out in this game on Tracer. So <laughs> you're here to watch the Q screen. Yeah, today's the day where it's a 20K Q screen. All right, this is the fight that's going on. They're trying to come back. And once again, Unko dies pretty early on here. 
if we look at the fight initiate, Unko went up there off screen and just dies. So it's really hard. It's really hard. I think that Rogue's playing an overly aggressive uh, team composition that they don't necessarily have the ability to run. Because maybe if AKM was like a legit god among men, he's good. And Unko was like a legit god amongst men, amongst men then, and they could just 2v3 everybody, that might be a proper composition. Or if Soon and Nox were a little bit more wary of defending them, I don't know. I, I would like to see, that's why generally you're going to see more, uh, more of like, you know, the Mercy here, like CLG is playing the Mercy with all these heroes. But we're into the next section of the map. And CLG, one thing with their composition is they don't have too much in the way of these late, I'm going to call them late game, like uh, later on ultimates where you build them up and you do a lot of work here. And that looked like a stick on the observer, but it didn't actually. Rogue here has a visor. And so this fight's going to come down to, remember, CLG has all of the momentum here. They have the ultimates. They already popped the barrier. Didn't get too much. Uh, Mikado didn't get too much out of that barrier, but they did use it. They will have res, of course, Farrah Rockets, Winston. So they have a lot of tools here. Waffle Tastic will have his bomb as well. It's pretty much up to AKM to get some really sick shots off. And that's it. If Unko gets a lot of shots as well, then he will be able to uh, get an ultimate. And it looks like he is. Look, he jumped from 75 all the way up to almost 100, just like that. AKM pops the visor, gets one, puts a ton of pressure on a second one. So like I said, they needed a good visor. They got a good visor. Not too bad. He gets shifted off the ledge, but it's okay. Soon was uh, paying attention to the card, and this is really great by Soon specifically. He identified the fact that if we look at CLG's team composition, whoa, team composition here. If you look, they're all very, uh, you know, Fairy's going to be up here somewhere, up here. She's going to be flying around. Mercy will be flying up around with him. Mikado will be going up on the Lucio, finding stuff, being aggressive. Of course, Winston jumps in. Diva jumps in. Tracer jumps in. And so soon on the cart, well, there's no one really there to kill him. There's no one really there to kill him. So he had no problem dealing with it. And so this, they, they get shut down here. CLG gets shut down here. And this is a scary part of being CLG now because this is a composition that has no uh, has no buildup. Basically, once they lose their momentum, they're dead. And what I mean by that if, is if we look at the ultimates here, we have, well, actually, I'll let everyone respond so that you can see their portraits. If we look at the ultimates here, all right, here we go. We have Winston, who's just like a zoning sort of ultimate. Uh, Diva, zoning sort of ultimate. Tracer Bomb, yeah, it's okay. Lucio, just a standard defensive ultimate. Just standard defensive ultimate. And then Farad may is maybe the only big play type of ultimate you have, but that's not really something to rely on. So CLG really doesn't have any ultimates to look forward to. They don't have anything to look forward to in this composition. It's pretty much... That's what they got right here. This is this is all they got, and if they get any ultimates, it's not going to matter too much. Meanwhile, Rogue, you know, they have AKM, who has that big play on the visor. <clears throat> well, uh, two defensive ultimates here. Unko, in particular, while he has his ultimate, is no longer vulnerable to flankers, because if you try to flank him, he can just ult away. No problem. So they have a little bit more strength here in Rogue, specifically with AKM, but uh, have, having the, the Zenya ult is a little bit makes him bulkier than than he normally would be in this type of composition so <clears throat> clg having had their momentum stop stopped normally i would expect them to swamp off to something i would expect like uh maybe a reinhardt to come out maybe a soldier maybe maybe swap this to soldier plus anna something like that because then at least you can start to build towards later in the game. Right now, CLG is just like, hey, it didn't work. We got to make it work. We got to go. We have to try to kill him. And if they get shut down by Rogue, if Rogue gets their number, there's no way that they'll ever that they'll ever be able to break out of it. By the way, Nico, oh, has the best D.Va ultimates of all time. I don't know how he keeps picking these people. Um, not just this game, just in all, every game. It just feels like whenever Nico throws a, throw, throws a bomb, it'll be completely random. We'll be like, yeah, bomb now. And it'll just kill everyone. I don't get it. Nico's, Nico's a god. So like I said here, CLG not really looking forward to anything right now. And it's a little bit of a desperate position to be in as them if they're trying to push through. So there we go. Trying to push through again. Jumps come in. The barrier comes out actually from Rogue. That was a well-timed barrier 
because that was right when CLG initiated, right when they committed. And so because of that barrier, they're going to lose. Very, very nicely done by wins. And that's where you should that's when you should pop the barrier. Right as your opponent commits. Right as the the fight comes to that point of no return, you can pop the barrier and then it will actually absorb stuff. Well timed, and that wins Rogue the fight. CLG still doesn't have too much. We're in the exact same spot they've been this entire time. And it's not and it's not just that they should swap for the sake of swapping. It's that they're clearly having trouble getting through this point, and the fact that they won't ever get any ultimates to help them out means they're not going to ever get anywhere, and Rogue does. See, Rogue has the visor now. If this fight were to cause any trouble for them, he would be able to use it, no problem. And so right now, they still have this soldier, and they still have the Zenyatta, and they still should be pretty vulnerable, but the benefit of this map is well this part of the map at least actually let's check let's take a look as we shimmy over to the next part here of route 66 is they're a little bit more defended if we look at where the backliners can stand now they can stand back here back here they can stand at the garage and they can look that way and see you coming they can even stand back here hide in the building so there's a lot of more a lot more places for the backliners to stay and this is more suitable for that greedy sort of composition. Plus, at this point, at this point, Unko got enough uh, got enough charge to have his ultimate. And once Zenyatta has has his ultimate, like I said, he's no longer vulnerable to flankers quite as much. And seems to be working out pretty well. I think that it would be punishable here if if CLG were to go even more into the dive because right now I said this is just like an aggro comp this isn't quite dive they still have the diva like if they were to have on this team a Genji Tracer Winston you know go go uh, just go absolutely all in then uh, I think they'd be able to punish Unko and Acam a little bit more here but with the Pharah they are with the Pharah and the Mercy they're kind of playing a little bit safer that it's not as volatile and they didn't get too much from it. Nico manages to pick off uh, CLG's Mercy there, the, but unfortunately won't get too much because eventually CLG manages to break through. And I'm not going to be commentating too much on the match itself this time because, like I said, most of the stuff just kind of happens the way it should happen. There's nothing particularly amazing going on. We're just looking at the big, broad stro strokes. Sometimes, well, actually a lot of times, the most important thing is just look at the big broad strokes and usually those can tell you what went wrong whether it's like oh this player could have done this a little bit better this player could have done this a little bit better eh, yes oftentimes and when we're looking at a match like apex where both teams were very well prepared they had reviewed each other extensively for hours and hours and hours and days and days and, days, and they were the best teams in the world yes i was very nitpicky about the players but here where the players are coming to it with less preparation you know, this is still, this isn't as big of a tournament. Yeah, this is teams that haven't necessarily had the chance to study each other for as long. And of course, in North America, it's been much more volatile. Apex is just this very long thing. The teams just keep going, 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 much more stable. Apex, I mean, sorry, North America teams are doing all sorts of crazy stuff all the time. And this is the semifinals, by the way. So I'm focusing more on these big broad strokes. And usually they hold the answer. So, CLG coming in, 27 seconds left. This is it. They have to push this. Right now, Rogue has a problem because they need to get AKM and Unko in. This is a little bit of a difficult situation for them. They need to find a way to get through, to get in. But if they can form this concave, if Rogue can get, like, you know, AKM somewhere and Unko somewhere and, and then actually get out, they will have the advantage here as long as the can't get off a really sick resurrect and so it's up to waffle tastic to try to find a bomb and try to take unko or, or akm before they can get through here because they will have a they will have an issue and he looks for it but akm did brilliant did brilliant rotation here and normally i mean when have you ever not come through that direction right i'm not i'm not saying that no one ever does it but generally the the normal thing to do is to come from this cave. Very rarely do players come all the way around and actually think in solo queue, especially, 
and think to take this. And this is the perfect thing that AKM could have done because he can't get stuffed anymore in this cave. And he's free to come out here, put a lot of pressure on. And so now that AKM's out here, the rest of his team can push out. Unko can do what I don't know where Unko was in the fight at this point. We'll see him maybe pretty soon. But he can do whatever he wants. And so it's going to give his team a ton of room to do whatever they want. All fantastic. Almost lands the sticky. And that would have been fight saving, game saving, but doesn't find it, unfortunately. The does have the res. He's looking for a big one. But at this point, everyone from Rogue is already out. Soon is, uh, this is Soon's fight, really, where he does a crazy amount. Soon went crazy this fight specifically. So I don't think that Rogue normally would have won quite that hard that fight, but they were still coming in with the advantage, even if Soon hadn't gone full crazy mode. So right now, just to remind everyone, I'm going over Rogue versus CLG, uh, Overwatch Pit Championship semifinals. Now we'll jump straight in to the reverse. Now CLG's on defense and Rogue is on attack. CLG's gonna pick a lineup here. Okay, yep, and this is this is indeed their final lineup. So CLG picking a very similar lineup to what Rogue pick, picked before, uh, except, so they obviously have uh, Farah here instead of Tracer, and they're running a Mercy instead of Zenyatta. So this Mercy is going to be a lot more durable than the Zenyatta was. The only issue is that Waffle Tastic now has a ton of pressure on him because he has nobody to hang out with him. Before, it was it was Unko and AKM hanging out, being best buds. But here, Waffle Tastic is just all alone by himself in the world because I mean maybe Mikado I guess would stand back and try to peel for him, but that's that's pretty much it. That's all Waffle Tastic has. He doesn't have the double supports looking after him bef like before. The will be up with the Mercy. Aishani will just be launched off with Winston and Miso will be doing diva stuff also going up with the Winston as well so here we go they will be playing aggro they will be playing the aggro cheese here Farrah is good at this because she can take advantage of all these trains and this crazy stuff in the beginning of the map it is a little bit risky though CLG knows that they're taking a risk but the point of this is if the, if they do lose the fight it's no big deal they can come in and come back before the cart gets to any crazy distance so it's high risk, but at the same time, because you're dying so early, you can still get back. So let's see how, uh, what we're going to do. Rogue running Unko again on the Zenyatta in this very mobile composition. Going to make him vulnerable, but in this particular case where he can just stand in the spawn, it's super, super good. And it's pretty much impossible to deal with uh, you know, a Zenyatta who can just be invulnerable in the spawn uh, with this very kind of greedy-ish lineup from Rogue where they have both the Lucio and the Zenyatta. And they're utilizing the fact that they can stand in the spawn room. So, there we go. CLG gets wiped out. Rogue had just too good of a composition coming out of spawn. That This is like, that I was just so, so so good by them. But now CLG needs to come back, and they, they will. They have the composition where they can come back, no problem. It's not like, uh, oh, by the way, notice that Waffletastic swapped off of the soldier immediately onto the tracer, which makes now this composition looks much tidier. Like, now no longer do you have the awkward tracer, the awkward uh, soldier standing out. And I, I think that that was a big part of the switch. Waffle Tastic was just sort of having to run, or sprint around the entire time and not do any damage. So, CLG comes out with it, finds AKM, finds Unko, that it is still a festering problem here. On attack, it's not quite as bad if you can execute it properly, because generally on defense, they will be playing further back. But CLG here, with the perfect response, saying, hey, you know, they're still running Unko on Zenyatta. They still just have a like we can we can go dive these guys. We can just go kill them, and indeed they do go kill them. <laughs> That's pretty much what they did. Let's go kill them. All right, Waffle Task swapped tracer. They killed him. So, going through. Now uh, it's up to Rogue. They're still sticking Unko on here. By the way, Nico, another diva bomb. Somehow I don't know how it catches the playing Mercy. I feel like it shouldn't have. But I'm not too sure. The had Resurrect. And if he was able to res here, this would have been much, much stronger for CLG, obviously. I really, I mean, either Nico is literally a god, and he, like, did all the calculus correctly. He he did the angles. He got he has his notepad on the right. He's like, yep, I see that uh, the Mercy is exactly 5.7 meter. Okay, so she, she won't make it. She'll be 0.1 meters short. 
of cover before this thing hits her. I feel like that's when Nico is. Anyway, so uh, CLG pushing through. The needs to get a sick res off because otherwise they pretty much can't kill anybody. Basically, what, happens, what has to happen when you're in this situation of they have all the things and you have none of the things, unless Miso can be Nico, is you pretty much have to uh, let them use all of their ultimates and then rest it with your mercy. So this is kind of a suicide ultimate from Hydration. He intentionally did that crazy, crazy play to try to just maybe get a pick and trade out. And then the, the Mercy player, was supposed to come and res everyone after that. But the got picked off very early, went a little bit too far up. Rogue did a good job of identifying, hey, the came up, let's just kill her instantly. And I've seen that happen before, multiple times, where the Farah and the Mercy will go in. The Farah will go for a suicide play where they'll go in, try to use the rockets, just try to kill people. And the expectation is, okay, they're going to kill our Farah who's using Rocket Barrage, and then our Mercy can res her. No problem. And then when you have teams like Rogue who just have such good eyes, they see, oh, look, there's a Mercy and a Farah. The Mercy has res. We have to kill the Mercy first, even though the Farah is the obvious target on our screen. And so there, finally, they have the res come out. The first res all game, so Rogue doing a good job denying it. The, you know, wasn't on camera the entire time, but died quite a few different times. Here's another fight where Soon goes nuts. I said that if one player were to stand out this game, it would be Soon. But I th I, I'm pretty sure that at this point, CLG should just lose. I, uh, they're pretty far away. I can't, I, obviously, if the camera could see the spawn, we could see exactly how far away. But being able to get out of here with something like a Farah is a little bit difficult. You see that they do come from that alternate angle but still, that's too far. Having to come from that alternate angle means that you don't have as much time because it's much further than just going straight through the cave. And because of that, Rogue is going to get within one meter of the cart. CLG is forced into very awkward positions with their Farah and Mercy. And that, uh, that's the match. That's it. So, this kind of goes along with my team composition guide that I posted on my main channel a little while ago about mobile heroes versus immobile heroes. And it was pretty clear to see that it was pretty clear to see that interaction. When you had the soldier and the Zenyatta with all those mobile heroes, they had a big problem, especially in that first area of the map where there wasn't too much cover. CLG was able to exploit it on defense for a little bit. Unfortunately, uh, uh, that ridiculous diva bomb killed their mercy, which opened up the point, right? And I think if they had done the same thing on attack, they would have been able to exploit it there as well, go harder on the dive. Instead, they stayed to, with that like lukewarm 2-2-2 comp. It wasn't that; it was like an aggressive 2-2 comp, but they didn't go all in. And so I hope that maybe enlightened uh, enlightened a little bit uh, how <laughs> how team compositions work. And yes, we will be playing the new Uprising. It's out. I'm so so I'm so stoked to play this after the stream. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, for you guys on the stream, don't go, everywhere, don't go anywhere. But for the people on YouTube, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I will answer questions as always. Uh, never forget to stay positive. Have a great day. See you soon. I said see you soon. <laughs>